Yo, guys, welcome back. Video two with the floss band. I said before, uh, I had a few videos of these from like two and a half years ago, but these weren't really so common in Europe. Again, this is this is a rogue voodoo band, but you can also buy the same thing now from Perform Better in, in, uh, in Germany, which is quite cool. So now these are quite common in Europe, so I'm going to do a few of the videos that I like to do the most. First one was a bit more of a basic one you could do on your own. The second one is a bit more advanced, where you need to be a bit careful, but with good communication with your partner, um, any but he's basically able to do this. So uh, let's start with how to wrap one of these. So I'm going to take his uh, left arm, yeah, your left arm, and basically just have him set it on my shoulder here. You can do it however you want. I spoke in the last video about why I keep the shirt on. I want to move above the shoulder cap, the shoulder caps or the shoulder joint, whatever you want to say. I want to move above it, and you can see the the line of his shirt, the seam of his shirt. Basically, that is where his shoulder goes into his body. I want to get as high above that as I can. With the shirt off and the body being a bit wet, sweat obviously, it, uh, it, it slips quite a bit. So, I like to now keep the shirt on, which if you're working with a female client or in a cold environment, that's always easier anyways. And as I start wrapping, you're seeing I'm pulling some tension. I'm pulling about, I don't know, 75, 85% tension. I'm quite tight if I want. You're only gonna keep it on for a few minutes, so you're not gonna kill, any, you're not gonna kill anybody. Uh, you can see how high I start wrapping up to really try to get as much tissue above that shoulder as I can because we're working on some internal rotation here. When I start running out of the wrap, I like to try to do the X of death, I call it. So basically here comes diagonal, and here, as I cut it off, it creates that X. Usually we like to get it over the point we're working with, but because I'm working quite high on the internal rotators, that's a bit difficult. So the X is right here. Oh, it's quite tight, as you can see. You want to tie it off like a balloon. And now you're going to lie on your back. And this is where it gets a bit um, advanced, sketchy, scary, crazy, dangerous. But if you do this, start out light. Discuss it with the guy you're working with. Make sure he feels safe with it. But basically what we're going to do is we, we want to push his arm inter into internal rotation. The problem is, is as I do that, instead of the bone, the humor spinning in the, in the socket, if you will, it likes to push forward. So we need to block that movement. So one way you can do it is you can block it with the arm here and just push his arm into internal rotation as I use my hand to block his shoulder. You can also add a, let's say like a backwards rotational force to kind of grind up that tissue, pull that fascia away from the muscle here, which is going to hurt a little bit more. I've done this quite a bit. I'm quite confident with it, so when you get a bit more comfortable, you can use your knee. So with your knee, you go back to the same thing. I can use my knee to block his shoulder down, or I can use my knee to add a bit of a posterior, ah, uh, now, backwards rotation, we keep it simple for everybody. And as I do that, I push his shoulder forward, or his arm down, sorry, into internal rotation. I block the anterior translation of the shoulder, and I pull with my knee back, if you will, towards me, grinding it, allowing that tissue to open even more. And he'll tell you it feels fantastic. Mm -hmm. Just have him breathe a little bit. I like to guard his elbow just right here. With my right hand, you can see that. Just to add a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of support around the elbow, so I'm losing my words. We just destroyed ourselves with fitness for about an hour here. And as you see, the more I do it, the lower his arm starts to go. So you can see my knee pulling backwards as I push his arm forwards. Again, this is a pretty advanced technique. Um, you want to be careful with this. Um, I'm, not, I'm a certified licensed athletic trainer. That doesn't mean much in Europe, but that basically means I've got a four-year sports medicine degree, so I've done quite a bit of this stuff. But if you're just if you're in communication with your partner, it doesn't really matter so much for your background. You just need to be smart and be safe. All right, so I think that's quite good here. I think it's been long enough. We usually do this for about two and a half, three minutes, or until he's screaming in bloody mercy because he can't feel his arm anymore. And then what we do is we look for the piece and where it is. I can't find it. So that's for this guy. Oh, I can't get under there. Go ahead and sit up real quick. Okay, sure. There you are. Oh, that's so tight. Okay, so, and then we just, unravel the arm, you can have him hold it up, and we do the unraveling. Again, don't have the athlete or the client or the person whip his arm and go crazy. Just have him sit, relax, breathe, let the blood come back, let the fat and the muscles and everything come back to normal. And once the feeling is back, have him continue in his normal day in about 
two, three, four, five minutes later, everything's fine. He can continue with activity, he can start the activity, he can do whatever he wants. So um, cool, like I said, be careful with the knee, don't hurt anybody, speak with your client, speak with your athlete, no matter background, doctor of physical therapy, chiropractic, um, fitness guy, studying engineering, it doesn't really matter. Just speak with the person you're with and it should be safe. So cool, any questions, right on the wall, and until next week, peace.